Greetings and blessings, my sisters and brothers in Jesus Christ. My name is Glenn Shang, and I'm the pastor of Haleyville and Morristown United Methodist Churches. Haleyville and Morristown is located in the township known as Commercial Township. We're part of the larger Cumberland County in the southwestern corner of the great garden state of New Jersey. If you're in our neighborhood, we invite you to Sunday morning worship. Haleyville United Methodist Church begins worship at 930. And then the Morristown congregation begins their worship at 11 a.m. We've got a short scripture reading for today. Then we'll have our prayer and then our message. Our reading comes from the last book of the New Testament or the Greek Bible, Revelation chapter 1, the first chapter, verses 4 through 8. Let us hear the word of the Lord, beginning with verse 4 of Revelation 1. John, to the seven churches that are in Asia. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Now verse 7 takes a quote from Daniel chapter 7 and Zechariah chapter 12 in the Old Testament or the Hebrew Bible. Verse 7, look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will, wa will wail. So it is to be. Amen. And verse 8 takes a quote from Isaiah chapter 41, verse 4. I am the Alpha, which means the first, and the Omega, which means the last, says the Lord God, who is and it was, and it is to come, the Almighty. Revelation chapter 1, verses 4 through 8, with several quotes from the Old Testament or the Hebrew, Hebrew Bible prophets. <clears throat> we're going to, excuse me, we're going to pray, and then we're going to have this, uh, today's message. Will you pray with me? Thank you, Lord, for your living, loving, holy, and precious word. Teach us, Lord, help us to be teachable. Bless us, O Lord. Allow us to bless you and bless others, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're wrapping up a series on the Sacrament of Holy Communion. The title of this message, This Holy Mystery 3. This Holy Mystery 3. So we celebrate the third and final message on this beautiful sacrament. And again, I share from the On Again, Off Again resource. This Holy Mystery, a United Methodist understanding of Holy Communion. This Holy Mystery, a United Methodist understanding of Holy Communion. This is a study from some just a few years ago, several years ago now, about what we as United Methodists believe about the sacrament we celebrate each and every month. In this message, I plan to build upon what we looked at in the last two messages. Well, the last time around, we examined the meaning of a sacrament. Sure, we do not use this word in everyday life, though perhaps we should if we are living the word in our everyday life. A sacrament is God acting, God revealing, and God showing. That's what a sacrament is. God acting, God revealing, and God showing. We are the ones who respond. We are the ones who reply. We are the ones who say yes to God's call upon our lives. In addition to this, we sometimes hear the term Eucharist. Eucharist. Uh, we often hear this used in place of the words Holy Communion. Eucharist is just the Greek word for thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Now, uh, within the This Holy Mystery document, we read in page 9, Eucharist reminds us that the sacrament 
is a thanksgiving to God for the gifts of creation and salvation. Near the beginning of the Great Thanksgiving part of the communion liturgy that we have in our United Methodist hymnals, I will say, and we get this from page 13, I as the, the, uh, uh, the elder, the Methodist pastor will say, it is right and a good and a joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. We thank God for giving us all that we see and all that we cannot see. We Eucharist God. Hey, I like that. We Eucharist God. We give him thanks for saving us through Jesus Christ. Back in the first century, the followers of Christ encounter him in a very personal way. Through the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup, the early disciples, followers, believers, experience a fresh presence of the risen Lord, and they receive sustenance and nourishment for their lives. Let's go back to this holy mystery again. Here's another quote from uh, the study and the survey. As the church organized itself, this custom of Eucharist became the distinctive ritual of the community and the central act of its worship. That taken from this holy mystery. The practice of Holy Communion in the early church is at the core of the community of faith. This brings up another issue in the United Methodist Church 2,000 years later. What emphasis do we place on this important sacrament? Is it really central to our worship? Is it, if it really is central, then why don't we celebrate the Lord's Supper every time we get together for any act of worship? Even John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, even John Wesley himself practices what he calls constant communion by saying it was, in his words, the duty of every person to receive the Lord's Supper as often as possible because it is a plain command of Christ. Reverend Wesley even advises his elders, his pastors, to administer the Supper of the Lord on every Lord's Day. Again, if Holy Communion the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup is at the core of this faith community, either Haleyville, Morristown, or where you worship, should we consider celebrating it more than more often than once a month? Something to think about. One goal of this holy mystery is the renewal of worship in each and every United Methodist congregation. Gail Felton, who authors the study guide that comes along with the document, Gail also encourages us to have an enhanced, a, a better appreciation of Holy Communion. As a United Methodist pastor and as your pastor at Haley Villa Morristown, and I'd like to think I'm your pastor regardless of what church you attend, but I've worked with you to provide a deeper and more intense experiences of encountering God through our worship and also through these messages. We read in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3, in the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, Isaiah 6, 3, that the seraphim, literally the burning winged serpents, are calling out to each other words of true worship. Here's Isaiah chapter 6, verse 3. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Isaiah 6, verse 3, the great prophet. The companion passage of true worship is found in Revelation chapter 4, verse 8, chapter 1, verse 8, sorry. When the four living creatures, very similar to the spiritual seraphim of the Isaiah passage, the four living creatures never stop singing, holy, holy, holy. 
the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Again, I'm sorry, I, I messed, that is Revelation chapter 4, verse 8, but it sure sounds a lot like Revelation chapter 1. Here it is again, the four living creatures never stop singing, Holy, 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 the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Maybe we need to hear this more than once. Again, Revelation 4, verse 8. It is believed that the three holies reference God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And the was and is and is to come also covers the threefold Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That pretty much covers all time by the one who is beyond time. Let me leave you with the ending of Revelation, the Revelation chapter 4 passage. The eternal song continues with the voices of the 24 elders who are worshiping the one who is on the divine throne. Revelation 4, verse 11. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they existed and were created. Revelation chapter 4, verse 11. This is what it's all about. Over the past two messages in this series, I've given you an introduction to the Methodist way of the Holy Sacrament, but it means nothing unless it is grounded in Scripture, which I've also provided to you. Well, God has and is and is to provide. Let us remember who we are celebrating or whom we are celebrating. His name is Jesus. And let's continue holding on to the reason for our celebrating, because we have salvation in his name. It's that simple. It, truly, it is truly a holy mystery. We cannot fully understand it, but we can fully obey it. The Apostle Paul says it best when he writes in his first letter to the Church of Corinth, chapter 9. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15. Well, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. After a brief prayer, I want you to stick with me for our commercial break, a way to apply this message to your daily life. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, again, we give you thanks and glory for who you are and who you've made us and called us to be in Jesus Christ. We thank you. We pray in his name. Amen. Commercial break is a, it's a play on words of commercial township, uh, where Haleyville and the Morristown churches are. It's a way to take what you've heard in these few minutes of this message and to put it into practice. All right, let's, let's go. The, the words will be there on the screen. God calls you. God is calling you. How are you responding? God invites you to his table. Do you come thankfully? You do not need to get the Trinity, understand the Trinity. He was, is, is to come. This week, the action step. God honors you with life, breath, and life. Honor God back. My sisters and brothers, I encourage you to go in peace, and may the God of peace go with you. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, there's that Trinity, amen.